uses something else, though, besides just his word. And this, is, this blew my mind, because Rick Warren's a Baptist minister, and uh, I was once a Baptist. And he, what he says is, he says, but God uses the circumstances of your life even more so than he does his own word. Whoa, are you kidding me? A Baptist wrote that? <laughs> yeah, he, uh, you know, that our circumstances become even more powerful instruments to do this work of making us like Jesus, even in the word of God. Because, you know, you're only in the word of God so much, but you're constantly going through circumstances. You're constantly facing people and situations where you can, you can, you can balk and 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 avoid and 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 you know. And I'm not saying that there's never. Sometimes the pain and suffering we're in, we can find ways out of. Maybe someone needs to be reviewed, or somebody needs to be, you know, you get get away from a person. But there are lots of pains and struggles and circumstances in our lives that we can't get away from. Are we willing to look at the fact that God is using those things to bring us to look like Jesus? Listen to what Joey Erickson Tata said. Johnny uh, was in a, she dove off into a lake and broke her neck when she was 19. She's been quadriplegic since then. But she's, uh, she's an amazing woman. If you, we got to meet her one time. This is what she said. She said, only in suffering do we really get to know Jesus? That will change your life. If instead of complaining about every pain and sorrow and heartache of your life, you begin to understand that, Lord, I can really know you in this suffering. In the pain of this circumstance, I can get to know you. We learn to trust in God most often only when there's nowhere else to turn. That's why there are things we learn only in pain and suffering. C.S. Lewis said that pain is God's megaphone. He whispers in our joys. He yells at us. I mean, in other words, getting our attention in our pain. Everything in our lives is for the purpose of making you more like his son. That's not to say that, that God is... Doing bad things to you, you know, is, is not like the, the, the mean football coach, you know. It's for your own good, you know, you're going to be strong in November or December, you know. It's not that kind of a thing, but, but here's what Romans 8, 28 says. It says that God works all things for good to them that love him and are called according to his purpose. That means even the devil, in his attempts to destroy, destroy you and to turn you away and to discourage you, even that... God takes and uses for your, to make you more like Jesus, if you let it. The worst of our circumstances, God can work through. Peter talks about our suffering, and the faith that we learn in the midst of that suffering is faith more precious than gold. Refined through those things which we walk. So we don't rejoice in pain. We don't, we don't say, give me more trouble, Lord. You know, cut my leg off, Lord, so I can, you know, learn. No, but, but as suffering comes, as pain comes, as, as life comes, we say, Lord, you can even use this to conform me to Jesus, to make me more like him. It takes a while, but it's worth it. I don't want to get to eternity. And I'm, you know, spiritually this 500-pound guy, right? And Jesus is sort of chiseled at, you know, 1, 220, you know. And i got to get all that stuff off of me, you know. I'm just get That's just a graphic, gross image. But, but you know, I want to begin to work that a little earlier in the process. The thing is, among circumstances, even, our, even those things that tempt us are opportunities to conform us to the image of Jesus. One of the things that, that, that he makes the point of in the book that, that you know, we always think about temptation as bad. I'm tempted. You know, I'm tempted to look at that person or to buy that or to do that. And, and all that is, is always meant to be, for us, a, a conviction by the devil. To go, wow, you're being tempted. You're a bad person. Well, guess what? 
That's just Satan talking because even Jesus was tempted. You won't ever stop being tempted. You won't ever find a place before you reach eternity where you're not being tempted in some way. It's just a part of a lot of life. But in that, God can even work. Every time you're tempted to do something wrong and you don't do it, you become more conformed to the image of Christ. You see how it works? Jesus is the perfect, he is the epitome of all the, the, the love chapter in 1 Corinthians. Love is kind, love is perfect, does not boast, etc., etc. That looks like Jesus. And that's what God's doing in your life if you let him. The fruit of the Spirit, kindness, peace, patience. All the times that we're tempted to lose our temper, to lose it, is all can be used by Christ to make us more like patience, like long-suffering, even the temptations of our lives. My niece was with us on Thursday night. Um, Sawyer there reminds me of her. She's a little older. She woke up, I kid you not, every 30 minutes from about 1 a.m. to 5 a.m. And she's in the next room over. And I'm supposed to run a nine-mile race in two days. Every 30 minutes, you know. And, and, and you're, the temptations, right? You know. But, but in that, even that, turned around can be said, Lord, what are you trying to teach me? What, what possibly could you be showing me through this? You know, I, I don't know how I ran the race, to be honest with you. I didn't sleep very good Friday night either. But the Lord is teaching, you know, will teach us even through our temptations. Get into the, the purpose of life. The, the chapters on temptation are awesome. They will give you strategies to overcome temptation, to acknowledge where it's happening, to recognize that other believers become our greatest gift. Guys, there is nothing more powerful than confessing what you're being tempted by to another guy. Ladies, the same for you. I mean, there is such power when we have the, the guts to go, this is what I'm really tempted to go do. That releases such power in our lives when we do that. But I, I, I just encourage you to get in those chapters. Look and see that kind of stuff and, and, and read what, what Rick Warren says about it. Good stuff. Let me end here. This process takes time, and, and this is a hard message. We, we love to hear about grace and what is beyond our power, and we, we really struggle to hear about our part to play. And we'd a lot rather just Jesus just transport us to heaven as soon as we accept him. But there's a work to be done. There's a purpose to bring us, to shape our lives, to get off that stuff that's just a hindrance and a holding us back from being all that we are in Christ. Why does it take so long? Well, the short reason is because God knows that we are weak and that we would become overwhelmed and we'd give up if we saw everything. That's why I really think it's ridiculous to think that you have to somehow confess every sin you have to clean yourself up before you receive Christ. Because let me tell you, if God was to open our minds and show us every sin... You would, you would just lay on the ground. I would lay on the ground and just cry like a baby and say, that's it, I give up. You know, I can't do this. God is much more patient with us than that. He reveals a little at a time. And little by little with his, with his chisel or his sledgehammer or whatever <laughs> instrument he needs to use at that time, he begins to, to do his work in us. Over time, let him do it. Let him work in you. Take those first steps. 